Hi, I'm Amina, and I'm going to be discussing sustainability in the AI sector. We've just passed the one-year anniversary of the release of ChatGPT, and already AI has become a huge part of our lives, especially in the wake of COVID-19 and the resulting push towards a more digital future. It is being hailed as an important tool for developing more sustainable solutions, but it is also becoming clear that whilst AI holds a lot of potential for mitigating the climate crisis, if deployed incorrectly, it could also very easily make things worse. There are many ways in which AI can be used in our sustainability efforts. For one, it increases our ability to collect and analyse large amounts of data, which enables more efficient and accurate scientific work and better informed decision making. It can also help improve automation across sectors such as transport and industry, as well as increase efficiency in areas such as individual consumption, energy and resource allocation. By automating repetitive tasks, it frees up human capacity to focus on more creative and strategic approaches to sustainability. It can also be used in combination with other technologies to monitor and reduce the effects of natural disasters, as well as for policing illegal climate-related activities such as logging. Until recently, the general attitude of the AI industry has been bigger is better, but recent environmental concerns have started to put a plug in this blind obsession with development for the sake of development. One way to analyse the direct impacts of AI is by looking at its four-stage life cycle. Firstly, Producing an AI model requires the use of specific pieces of physical hardware, including CPUs, GPUs, semiconductors, and computer chips. These all require a large amount of natural resources, and the production process often involves mining, smelting, and refining. Environmental impacts of this can include soil contamination, deforestation, erosion, biodiversity degradation, toxic waste disposal, air pollution, and more. However, the data on these effects is not usually disaggregated to reflect the specific impact of components produced uniquely for AI, which makes it pretty hard to measure exactly how much damage is caused by the production of these parts. The environmental costs of transporting AI hardware are also difficult to disaggregate from those of transporting other ICT hardware. However, the few estimates available put transport at less than 5% of total greenhouse gas emissions over an AI system's lifetime. Decarbonisation of transportation is not an issue specific to AI, of course, but rather a global undertaking. However, it is still an important factor in understanding its overall footprint. Energy consumption in the operation stage of AI's life cycle is perhaps the biggest concern at the moment. Before they can be used, AI models have to be trained on extremely large data sets. Several studies have shown that training a single deep learning model can emit up to 284,000 kilograms of CO2, which is equivalent to the energy consumption of five cars over their lifetime. Once in use, the physical infrastructure used to support the program is also a significant contributor to the overall power consumption. MIT reported that the cloud now has a larger carbon footprint than the entire airline industry, and a single data center might consume an amount of electricity equivalent to 50,000 homes. Concerningly, many of these data centers are still powered by non-renewable sources such as coal. A not-so-fun fact, Deep learning models require so much computational power that asking ChatGPT a single question can consume up to 100 times more electricity than if you were to just Google the question instead. Water consumption is also a large concern, with water being used both directly for data center cooling and indirectly through electricity generation and hardware production. It is projected that the energy consumption of AI will increase by up to 300% by 2025, with data centers and their associated infrastructure accounting for most of this energy consumption. So it is critical that we address these issues as soon as possible. AI models also often require complex hardware components that can be difficult and expensive to recycle or dispose of safely. This electronic waste can contain toxic chemicals and materials, which leads to pollution and other environmental damage. Much of global e-waste is disposed of in developing countries, which just adds to their already significant environmental and social challenges. AI can also have indirect negative impacts on the environment, however, of course, these are more difficult to quantify. For example, AI's capacity for increasing efficiency in production lines can increase emissions by supporting mining, fossil fuel extraction, production refining, etc. Additionally, AI can affect consumer behaviour in an ecologically negative way, such as through the use of recommender systems in e-commerce to increase consumption. In order to ensure that AI continues to contribute positively to our sustainability goals, we need to tackle these issues as quickly and effectively as possible. Recent research has shown some promising possible solutions. The key will be incentivizing companies to implement them. Firstly, we need to address the issues surrounding physical infrastructure. AI systems should be designed with recyclability, durability and repairability as key focus points to help reduce e-waste. Increasing energy efficiency within data centers could cut emissions by 30%. But of course, the ultimate goal is for them to run entirely on renewable energy sources. 
An interesting case study is the Leftel Mine Data Center in Norway, which uses 100% renewable hydropower electricity. Notably, it also uses very little water in its operations and reuses the heat generated by cooling solutions based on the supply of cool seawater. As a result, this data center is on track to become fully carbon neutral. Researchers are also focusing on increasing energy efficiency in new AI algorithms, for example through sparse modeling, which is a form of machine learning that requires a significantly smaller data set to train the AI model. Another hot topic is edge computing, which entails performing AI computations on devices at the edge of the network, such as smartphones, instead of in a central server, which reduces the need for large data transfers and decreases energy usage. We can also change our attitude towards AI. Currently, it's very fashionable to implement an AI solution to a problem, but often deep learning algorithms are being used where something much simpler and less energy intensive would have sufficed. And of course, transparency remains a key part of the solution. Tools and frameworks could be developed to help practitioners estimate AI carbon footprints more easily at all stages of the AI lifecycle, and reporting energy usage alongside other performance metrics would increase accountability. If we want to keep AI green, we need to fundamentally shift our approach to development by focusing more on collaboration and community-driven problem solving rather than marginal technological advances. Overall, AI has enormous potential for helping us mitigate the climate crisis. However, if we do not start off on the right foot and ensure we're using it in a sustainable manner from day one, it will only worsen our situation. Thank you very much.